In this video, I'll demonstrate isolation exclusion, which enables you to define network and process-based exceptions when applying selective isolation to devices. This capability can help ensure that critical tools like VPNs, DNS servers, and forensic tools still work while maintaining security controls. In Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, you've had the ability to isolate devices from the network since the very beginning. But isolating a device disconnected all apps and processes from the network, except for Defender for Endpoint, and optionally, Outlook and Teams. Now, you can define exclusion rules to exclude apps and processes based on process paths, IP addresses, and so on, to maintain their connections even after isolating a device. This capability allows you to remain connected to users with apps like WhatsApp, use third-party forensic tools, or anything else that might be helpful during your investigation. Next, I'll demonstrate how to create exclusion rules in Defender for Endpoint. Users with the Security Admin role, Global Admin role, or RBAC roles with the Manage Security Settings permission can define isolation exclusion rules in the Microsoft Defender portal. Starting from the Settings page, select Endpoints, followed by Isolation Exclusion Rules. If you see a message that says you're using the legacy selective isolation experience, make sure you turn on Isolation Exclusion Rules on the Advanced Features page, like I've done here. You'll see tabs for Windows and Mac rules. Below each tab is a list of existing rules, and each rule includes parameters like direction, service name, process path, and IP address. To create a new rule, select Add Exclusion Rule. Then, in Rule Name, give the rule a name. In this case, I'll call the rule My Forensic Tool and give it a brief description. Since I'm creating a rule for a specific tool that's installed on the machine, in Process Path, I'll type the path to the program file. Program files backslash myforensics.exe. You could also provide a service name, package family name, communication direction, and remote IP address for the rule. Of course, not all these settings are required. For example, you might create a rule that just specifies a particular service or just outbound connections to a remote IP address. That's pretty much it. Select Next, followed by Create Rule. and you'll see your new rule added to the list. Isolation exclusion rules also support Mac OS. In those rules, you can define a communication direction and a remote IP address. Next, I'll show you how to use the exclusion rules when isolating a device. Anywhere you can isolate a device, you can use isolation exclusion rules. For example, this device has been involved in an incident that I'm investigating, and I want to isolate the device until I'm finished. To do that, select More Actions, followed by Isolate Device. By default, this will isolate the device from the network, and it'll remain connected to the Defender for Endpoint service. But I also want to use my exclusion rules to have access to key tools during my investigation. So I'll select Use Isolation Exclusion to allow specific communication while the device is isolated. Then, in Comment, I'll type some notes that describe why I'm isolating the device and why I'm allowing isolation exclusions. Last, select Confirm to finish isolating the device from the network while allowing connections to the Defender for Endpoint service and my tools. Easy peasy. And you can review the command details in the Action Center history. You can use isolation exclusion rules anywhere you can isolate a device. Managing and using these rules is also possible via the Defender for Endpoint API. To learn more about it, see our documentation on Microsoft Docs. Microsoft Security.